Ugh. I would have to pay the baggage fee claim for these oversized bags. <laughs> friends welcome back to my channel this is absolutely one of my favorite conspiracy theories it's actually not as controversial as most that I'll probably be talking about because as of recent there was a poll done and over 60% of Americans actually do believe in this conspiracy theory um, they believe that it was some kind of cover-up or that the official narrative we were given was not the truth so based on that alone you could probably already guess but today we are going to be talking about the JFK assassination but again I have to make it clear that these are just theories the evidence I speak about is not hard evidence any opinions are strictly my own and this is just a theory so don't sue me <laughs> so we'll just get right into it John F Kennedy was the 35th president of the US and he was tragically assassinated on November 22nd, 1963 in Dallas, Texas, while riding in his presidential motorcade during a parade. Unlike the now bulletproof and completely enclosed motorcade, JFK was riding in an open top Lincoln Continental convertible. Lee Harvey Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald was found with a rifle on the sixth floor of a nearby building and was instantly detained and named the culprit. So the theory obviously is that this was some kind of cover-up that the government knew and that JFK was possibly most likely assassinated on purpose. There's tons of loose ends and evidence and just inconsistencies in the whole entire narrative that really push me and a lot of others to believe in this conspiracy theory. So these are the ones and the evidence that I found really most compelling. So a lot have to do with Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald. Oswald was charged with murder. Oswald was charged with the murder only 12 hours after it happened. They didn't find even find the fingerprints on the gun until the day after Oswald was killed. So that actually leads a lot of people to believe that they actually put his fingerprints on the gun after he had already passed away. Um, speaking of the gun, firearm experts say that the gun he used, which was a really poorly made Italian pump rifle, wouldn't have been able to make such perfect and clean shots that were only six seconds apart from each other. A lot of experts a lot of expert shooters have like recreated the scenario and tried recreating the actual scene and everything that happened and they all were unsuccessful even pro shooters with even new types of rifles tried it and they were all unsuccessful so Oswald was a marine but he was only a marksman there's like three different levels of shooters and marksman is either the lowest or the middle. I'm not sure, I'd have to look it up. But he was not an expert shooter at all. So his accuracy of the assassination is really questionable to those who are expert shooters. The building Oswald was supposedly shooting from was directly behind the motorcade. So the narrative was that he had gotten shot directly from the back. He had gotten shot twice directly from the back, but in-depth overview of the footage for experts actually researched and researched and overviewed the footage and it really shows and they concluded that it does seem that the shots were possibly coming from different directions. Two acoustical scientists researched multiple, multiple audio and video recordings of the actual shots being fired and they all determined that they more than likely were actually coming from the grassy knoll which was to the right of the president which that's a whole you can go more into depth about the whole grassy knoll and there's even some weird theories about the umbrella man which was a man holding an umbrella and possibly the umbrella was a gun and 
you can dive deep down in that hole if you'd like to, but <clears throat> I'm just going to stick with this one theory. <laughs> so back to Oswald. Even though he constantly, constantly denied doing it, he stated the whole time shouting that he was a patsy and he actually asked for a lawyer, he was completely denied any kind of legal representation and obviously he was, as we know, was killed before he was given any legal representation and before he had any kind of trial or was able to speak for himself at all, really. People believe Oswald may have actually been involved in it, but when the FBI completely turned it and put the whole entire blame on him, they think that's when he started saying he was a patsy and he wanted a lawyer, and that that's probably why he was killed, because they didn't want him to speak out about what might have actually happened. A lot more inconsistencies were the way that everything, the medical things, the things right after the assassination were conducted were completely, a lot of things were illegal and a lot of them just don't make sense. There's so many inconsistencies. So these are like the main ones that I found just really compelling. Kennedy was taken to Parkland Memorial Hospital where he was soon after when he got there pronounced dead. It was only less than an hour after he was pronounced dead that the Secret Service came completely against the orders of the doctors and the hospital staff, and they came and moved his body to Air Force One, which is completely illegal. You can look it up. It's still illegal to this. That's one thing that they do agree on, that it was completely illegal to do that. <clears throat> the medical personnel who took the x-rays and also the autopsy photos, um, which actually some, there were some reports, but I can't, I think it might have just been rumored that the autopsy actually was not fully completed before they actually took his body and took it to Air Force One. But <clears throat> those medical personnel who took the x-ray photos and took the autopsy photos have stated multiple times that the photos that were circulating afterwards, right after it happened, as well as which are the same photos that were entered into and are still in the National Archives are fakes. They say that those are absolutely not the photos they took and they swear to this. They gave testimony of it, but their testimonies were never taken into consideration. Um, more with testimonies, a lot of people who gave their testimony or answered questions or gave their side of the story to the FBI say that their answers and words were completely twisted just so it could fit the narrative of the Warren Commission. Another thing that I find really strange is the motorcade that Kennedy was in was actually refurbished and completely stripped and redone before forensic teams were even able to do any kind of research on it, which I think is just really weird and again is also illegal. <laughs> Some more evidence leaning towards a government cover-up are Lyndon B. Johnson, he did not see eye to eye with President Kennedy at all. They had completely different views, which I don't know why Kennedy chose him to be his vice president, but they had completely different views, did not see eye to eye, and Johnson wanted terribly, terribly to be president. There's actually photos of him while he's giving his presidential oath, standing right next to a grief-stricken Jackie Kennedy where he's actually smiling and laughing to people. A lot, a lot, a lot of like the funny business and just the weird things that happened after the assassination were conducted or done by the CIA, which a lot of people find strange because JFK actually wanted to completely get rid of the CIA. Only six months before he was killed, JFK gave an infamous speech where he talked about like not keeping secrets that the government should not conceal anything from the American people and that censorship, that censorship, I can't say that word, that censorship is dangerous and that he would not hold back any kind of facts or anything from the American people and that he would not be involved in any kind of conspiracies or cover-ups, which I really don't think is just merely a coincidence that he had just spoke about that before his assassination. It's just strange to me. Just days before the assassination, Kennedy signed a treaty that was going to remove all the US troops, all the US troops that were still in Vietnam, but 
if you really think about it, war makes us money. So by him pulling those troops out, the U.S. was going to lose a lot of money. So people believe because of this, as well as a lot of other changes that JFK wanted to make to our government, that other people like Lyndon B. Johnson, the CIA, were just completely against. They think that that could have given the CIA and other head officials the motive to get rid of him, so to speak. Only four days after Kennedy's death, Johnson put in a new memorandum or a new treaty that blocked the pullout order that JFK had signed for the troops to be pulled out of Vietnam. In fact, Johnson was actually the person who pushed us towards full-blown war at Vietnam, which you could actually research more of the Battle of Tonkin, I think it was, which a lot of people believe is a total, a whole nother cover-up and conspiracy that was done by Lyndon B. Johnson just to push us into war with Vietnam. <clears throat> JFK was actually one out of only two presidents who tried to get the U.S. out of the Federal Reserve by introducing interest-free money. And the only other president who tried to do this was Abraham Lincoln. And they both were conveniently assassinated right before they were able to put these plans into action. There's actually a ton, a ton, a ton of crazy coincidences between Kennedy and Abraham Lincoln, which actually I have a list of them right now. I'm just going to read them really, really fast, but listen to these. These are weird, and yes, they are coincidences, but after a while, you really start questioning how many things could just be a coincidence. So, obviously, both Kennedy and Lincoln were assassinated. Both of their killers were killed before they were able to have any legal representation or before trials. They both wanted the U.S. out of the Federal Reserve and tried introducing interest-free money. Lincoln was elected to Congress in 1846. Kennedy was elected to Congress in 1946. Lincoln was elected as president in 1860, and Kennedy was elected president in 1960. Both were shot in the back of the head in the presence of their wives. Both were shot on a Friday. Lincoln's secretary was named Kennedy. Kennedy's secretary was named Lincoln. Both were succeeded by a Southern man named Johnson. Both of their successors were completely against the, that person's main political stances, and they both completely changed that administration's work right when they got into office. Lincoln was shot in the Ford Theater. Kennedy was shot in a Lincoln that was made by Ford. Lincoln was shot in a theater and his assassin was found in a warehouse. Kennedy was shot from a warehouse and his assassin was found in a theater. So those are just some, there's actually a ton more, just weird coincidences between these two presidents, which, and just the fact that it was a hundred years apart is just, I don't know, since chills up my spine, it's just crazy, but Anyways, there's, yeah, there's a lot more things pertaining to JFK's assassination if you want to look more into it yourself. I highly recommend you do, like I always say, that you should never completely believe one narration. You should always research it yourself and look more into it. But with all that, with all the evidence like that, it's just really hard for me to not believe that there was some kind of cover-up but again this is just a theory and this is just my opinion but what do you guys think do you think there was some kind of cover-up do you think the actual narration was true that Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald actually did it but yeah let me know what you guys think if you enjoyed this conspiracy chat give me a thumbs up so I know and let me know what other subjects you guys want me to talk about I think my next one is going to be so definitely subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and then hit the notification bell. That way you'll hopefully be notified when I upload my next conspiracy chat or my next video. But until next time, stay creative and I'll see you next time. Bye.